So yesterday, Fort Park's Ghost Train officially opened to the public, and a lot of you are probably wondering, is it any good? Well, long story short, yes. It is really, really good. Would I queue three hours for it? Probably not. This video is just going to be uh, going over my experience with the ride, and uh, if you don't want to hear any spoilers, uh, you might want to not watch the rest of the video. <laughs> so when we got to the park, Ghost Train was advertised to open at 12 o'clock. So as, as you do, you go on a few rides, uh, watch your mates go on the dodgems for a little bit, got some food and then uh, decided to walk over to Ghost Train. And as expected, we were hit with a massive queue. Though the queue was massive, there were quite a few actors going around just telling everyone uh, that the train will not be calling at Chapel Station. Diablos Island, calling at... Then all of a sudden, the Mardi Gras parade would come around. Anyway, so it turns out that we wasted 40 minutes in that queue because uh, Ghost Train had been delayed to open until 2 o'clock. So, after watching some more Mardi Gras shows and um, going on a few more rides, we finally rejoined the queue at like 10 to 2, uh, hoping that the queue would be a little bit shorter, but alas, I was very wrong. And then eventually, they did let people in. So after waiting three very long hours, uh, we finally got to experience Ghost Train. So, what is the ride experience like? The ride starts off with a pre-show um, with a guy called Angelus Mortis. He uh, tells you about um, this group of people called the Believers and how they believe in the afterlife and whatnot. And this group of people take the last train to Chapel Station and they perform a ritual or something like that. So the next thing that happened is um, we went round to another pre-show uh, and it was basically a, a news report. Uh, but that pre-show was um, interrupted by a lady opening the door was saying all oh, passengers for the last train so I'm assuming that that um, pre-show is just used to delay uh, if the ride system isn't ready which is nice so you're not standing around doing nothing I suppose so yeah we got on the train and uh, the train does look a lot more beaten and worn down than it used to which is nice so it turns out they haven't actually put uh, screens uh, where the windows are to kind of replace the VR like a lot of people were thinking but um, for the the train itself actually have very heavily relies on two main actors that basically keep the story going and how we actually uh, stop at Chapel Station. Um, there are lots of great effects that happened in there, but I'll talk about more of that later. So after the first section of us being on the train, we finally stopped at so-called Chapel Station. Um, and then we walked round into this other room, which used to be uh, pretty naff uh, when it was Den Brown's Ghost Train, but they have spent quite a bit of money revamping it and it does look very nice there are quite a few lighting effects in there um, and the actors that were on the train are in now in that room and they're continuing the story on and one of the actors is standing in front of this coffin kind of thing and eventually she does end up opening this coffin uh, there's light beaming out of it going to the ceiling it does look very nice there are skulls all around the room, they lit up orange and you had figures that kept moving. I noticed in Theme Park Worldwide's uh, review on it, he said that there was uh, something that flew over you. I didn't notice that. So I'm not sure if that was working or not. Uh, but anyway, we got chased out by these uh, two other actors, pretty much. And then we went back on the train for the second half. So we get back on the train, we sit down and the actors are still acting kind of creepy, which is kind of cool and um, there are a lot of effects that go off in this section like the drain is shaking quite a bit there are things under your seat that vibrate your seat and whatnot um, although another thing mentioned in Sean's video is that um, there was meant to be two other actors dressed as nuns that came in and then there was also um, there meant to be a UV effect showing a bunch of markings on the wall um, that didn't happen. I did notice that when we was on there, there was just a section where nothing was really happening and the audio was kind of quiet. So it seems like um, it's starting to break already, which isn't very good. A year after that, we got off um, and we went into this fake section where you are meant to collect your online photo. And there is an actor in there dressed as a normal Thorpe employee. Uh, that says, oh, there's a, a spill in the cafe below us, or, and then we have to wait for uh, five or ten minutes for it to be cleaned up. Uh, but then all the screens go blank and everything starts moving around like it did in Darren Brown's. And then you have a scare actor that makes everyone jump. And yeah, that was it. Considering a few of the other effects uh, 
weren't working as of watching some other people's videos and reviewing it. It was still very, very good ride. The actors did brilliantly. And overall, the experience is roughly 20 minutes long. So, so it definitely is one of the longest attractions uh, at Fort Park. So overall, I do highly recommend that you uh, experience this ride for yourself because uh, putting it in words doesn't really do it justice, to be honest. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. I um, hope that you have a bit of an insight of the, what happens in the ride. Um, I do highly suggest checking out Jack Silkstone and Thing Park Worldwide uh, reviews on it because they do go into a bit more detail than I have. But yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll see everyone in the next video. Goodbye.